You're looking at a cylinder head from an OM617 Mercedes diesel engine. When this engine arrived in the U.S. market in 1978, I think people were freaking out trying to figure out how could you make a five-cylinder engine run smoothly. Well, this proved to be one of the best diesel engines ever made, and many of you will agree, but they have a unique sound. You can hear them coming down the road. <laughs> But as these engines age, they do develop some issues because they're so old. Look at this one, 30 plus years old. And I just want to, in this video, share with you 10 quick alerts about the cylinder heads on these engines. This would include the four cylinder OM616 and the five cylinder, both non-turbo and turbo diesel engines that were produced up until 1985. So the very first alert that I want to share with you may be a new one for a lot of you, but it has to do with this right here, this little, bolt. I've been receiving an increasing number of emails over the years, people saying, hey, I got a hole in the front of my diesel engine and it's leaking engine oil. I go, uh-oh, these things are loosening up. This is a plug nut that goes right here. There's a pin that goes in here that holds the idler sprocket for the timing chain. And let's see how this one fares. These are loosening up and falling out, folks. You need to be aware of this. If you have one of these older diesels, you need to get out there and check this right here. Let's see how tight this one is. I went and looked at some of my other cylinder heads and it was actually loose. Look at that. That's hardly even tight. So when this falls out, that's what it's gonna look like. And you're gonna be leaking oil and if you happen to have a loose pin in there that's not tight, that pin could fall out and the sprocket could drop down and you're gonna destroy the front of the engine. So pay attention to this. There's also a couple of larger plug nuts down lower in the engine block. You need to check those also for torque. These are showing up as loosening up due to high vibration and high mileage. Now let's go on to number two. The second alert I wanna share with you concerns small fuel leaks coming out of the cylinder head right below the fuel injector. You're gonna be thinking, well, why is there just a little bit of fuel? Maybe you'll see a few bubbles along with the fuel seeping out right in this area. Well, it has to do with a loose collar nut. That's the collar nut. The collar nut holds the pre-chamber down in the cylinder head. When the collar nut loosens up, you can see this pre-chamber will back out and you'll eventually just get a little bit of unburnt fuel coming out. A lot of times you can just tighten the collar nut back down and that will solve the problem. You see right here is a sealing ring, a crushable sealing ring below the top of the pre-chamber. And when that goes in and you torque down on the collar nut, that will seal it to the cylinder head. So if you see these small leaks coming up below your fuel injectors and you know it's not an injector return hose that's leaking, then you need to tighten and torque these collar nuts. Now this requires a very special tool. This is something that we make here in the shop. We make this out of super hard impact socket quality material and we provide a way you can tighten it down and when you move it it's not going to slip because if you try to use a tool that will slip on these collar nuts you're going to end up damaging the collar nut. So this is becoming an increasing irritant. It's not a major problem but this is something you can fix yourself in most cases using the proper tool that you see here. Number three has to do with valve adjustment on these older Mercedes diesels. A lot of people are not aware these valves need to be adjusted every 12,000 miles. They require some special tools, which of course we manufacture here in our shop. I'm very proud to say that these are the best valve adjusting wrenches in the world, par none. <laughs> but what's going to happen if you go to adjust the valves, you're using two wrenches like this, and you've got this is your adjusting nut here at the top, and you move that back and forth like this to adjust the clearance. And then when you're all done, what you'll do is take both wrenches and you'll lock them together. Now this takes a little bit of practice because as you lock them together, you're going to increase the clearance. So you have to kind of play around with this. But we've had reports from people when they go to tighten it like this with these wrenches, it just keeps spinning. And they're so frustrated, they say, Kent, what is wrong? Well, here's the problem, folks. And this has to do, once again, with the age and the amount of times 
that these nuts have been adjusted is this lower locking nut will strip out. And you will say, well, why does it do that? Well, I think the factory intentionally made these locking nuts out of a softer metal than the threads on the valve stem. Obviously, if you're going to strip something, you want to strip this nut. You don't want to strip the valve stem, then you got to pull the head off to replace that. But these can be replaced without having to pull the head off. So just remember this, if you're adjusting your valves, if they start to move like this, it's going to mean that you have a stripped locking nut. That's the small one underneath the adjustment nut. And we still are able to get these new and they're available on our website. My number four alert concerns this side of the cylinder head. This is where the intake and exhaust manifolds are bolted up with big nuts on these threads. And we're finding that the gaskets can fail and the manifolds can actually loosen up. You'll have weird exhaust noise and you may even have some rattling sounds. So if you have one of these older diesels, you want to go in here and check the tightness of all these nuts on these studs holding both manifolds to the cylinder head. If the gasket is badly burnt or damaged, you know, this one, yeah, see right here, you can see the burning area. It probably was leaking right in there. If the gasket's not too bad, you'll be able to tighten the nuts down, but if it's been damaged or it's been burnt out, you're going to have to replace the gasket with a new one by removing the manifolds and reinstalling them. My fifth alert concerns excessive oil consumption due to leaking valve guide seals. And this is what the valve guide seal looks like. You can remove the two nuts. You have, of course, the locking nut and the adjusting nut. Those come off. You can remove the spring, and here is the valve guide seal. That's what it looks like, and look at this one. It's hard as cement. These things really harden up with age. It's amazing they last as long as they do, but when they harden up, they start to lose their sealing ability. You can see this one is a little bit loose on the valve stem. So what happens is oil gets up in here when the engine's running, and then when you turn the engine off, of course, it leaks down through the seal into the stem. So if you have excessive oil consumption and you get a lot of smoke, a lot of black, dark, oily smoke at startup, it may mean that all your valve guide seals are no longer sealing. Now, this is a job you can do yourself. You can do it without removing the head. We have a kit and full instructions because you have to be really careful when you do this because you don't want to drop any of these valves down in the cylinder chambers. Oh, let me tell you, then you have a big problem. But if you follow the instructions carefully and you have the right tools, our kit does include the right tool to do this job and the procedure and the new seals, you may find that you can reduce oil consumption and your engine will burn much cleaner. But just keep in mind, folks, if this is an old diesel and it's burning oil, it doesn't necessarily mean that valve guide seals is the only reason you're using oil. My sixth alert has to do with excessive carbon buildup in the pre-chamber. Anytime you remove your glow plugs or replace a burnt out glow plug, you want to ream the carbon out. Now, you're not going to see any carbon here when I do this because the pre-chambers have already been removed. This is something that we build here in my shop. This is an all steel, very high quality reamer. You put it in like this and turn it in and you can ream that excessive carbon out of the pre-chamber. And what that does is it increases engine performance. With excessive carbon in here, you could have hard starting, rough idle after starting, and actually poor fuel economy because excessive carbon will affect the burning of the fuel as it moves from the pre-chamber into the main combustion chamber. So don't forget about reaming the carbon out of the pre-chambers in your old Mercedes diesels. I won't go over this anymore. I have a number of videos on this, but this is very important. My seventh alert concerns oil leaks in and around the valve cover. There are three common leaks. One is from the gasket itself, the gasket between the valve cover and the head. And this will seep oil, both back here and in along the front, even in the back. 
And a lot of people think that just replacing the gasket is going to solve the leak problem. It won't because these valve covers need a modification and I have an on-demand video on my website that goes over the modifications that you need to make to your valve cover so when you replace a gasket it's not going to leak anymore. The other area they leak is on the oil filler cap. These rubber seals are replaceable and should probably be replaced every couple of years because if you don't, you're going to get oil staining in and around this opening as you see here. And then the third one is from the breather. If you have a rubber breather on the top of your valve cover, use a high quality hose clamp to prevent any leaks in and around this area. We carry all these products on my website to help you solve your valve cover oil leak problems. My eighth alert concerns leaky head gaskets. They'll leak oil. They won't leak coolant, but they'll leak oil. And the most common area that they will leak oil is right back in this area underneath the intake and exhaust manifolds. If you're seeing oil wetness running down the inside of the block and behind your manifold or in behind your turbocharger, it's most likely the head gasket. Unless you can see excessive oil coming out of the valve cover casket, I would recommend you replace the valve cover gasket, do the modification of the valve cover, and then monitor the leak. If you continue to see wetness down here, it probably means your head gasket is leaking oil. They will survive a long time with a minor oil leak because it's not affecting oil getting into the coolant. But just be aware of this. If it gets excessive, you may start to see a little bit of oil showing up in your coolant. The only way to repair this is to remove the cylinder head and replace the head gasket. The last two alerts I want to share with you concerning diesel cylinder heads are not that common, but you should be aware of the problem. And number nine is a broken glow plug. <laughs> you don't want this to happen to you. It can be a nightmare to try to fix it. If you're lucky, you may be able to drill it out and get it out without removing the cylinder head. But in many cases, you may have to pull the head. So this is something you do not want to have happen. The best way to prevent this is don't leave the glow plugs in your cylinder head for years and years and years. And that's when they seize. You get moisture down in there, the thread seize up. The other thing you always, I'm gonna repeat, always use anesthesia compound, put a little bit on the threads and a little bit right here on the shoulder. Don't goop it on. We're talking about just a small amount and use anti-seize compound when installing either the pencil or the older series type glow plugs that you see here. And the final alert I want to share with you in this series is concerning cracks in the cylinder head. Yes, these cylinder heads will crack and they'll be very small cracks. Most of the cracks I've seen are either between the pre-chamber hole in the valve seat or between the two valve seats. Right in this area is where you'll see these cracks and they'll expand when the engine's running. So you'll start your engine up and it runs okay and then pretty soon you start to see white smoke. Maybe you have unexplained coolant loss. You're not sure where it's going. You could have a crack in an area where it's not leaking coolant and you may have some compression performance problems. This is kind of the last thing you want to consider. If you're chasing a problem with your diesel engine and you don't know what's going on, you could try having a radiator pressure test because that often indicates a blown head gasket, but it can also indicate a cracked cylinder head if the crack is in the area where there's a coolant passage, okay? So I'm just warning you, cracks do occur in these heads. It's not that common, but as these engines age, don't be surprised that you may find a crack in your own old diesel cylinder head. So I've gone through these 10 alerts. There's other issues, but these are my top 10. I'm going to put links below in the description of this video to take you to each one of these. I'll put a link after each one, one through 10. It'll take you to my website. You can read more about them and see some of the products and the supplies and tools we offer to solve these problems.